two, one. We're on. Hi, everybody. Amy Carrier and this guy. I think you know him. <laughs> hey, Rehan. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? Assalamu alaikum. Kaise aap log? Uh, welcome to this entrepreneurship show. It will be in English uh, mostly. And if we need to translate, I will do some translation. Uh, the show is about uh, going to be every week. And it's about, oh, I heard the wrong version. Okay, so it's about um, people uh, being able to start their own business. Uh, and you know, ask questions to Amy about entrepreneurship. She uh, is going to guide you about that, and you can ask me questions also. So go ahead and add Amy on your Facebook, and you can inbox her questions to her. Also, you can write on this page uh, the questions. We also have. Uh, at 5 p.m. Pakistan time every day for the next five days, Tanya Shipman, who would be who is also doing a similar show for you guys to be able to learn. My goal is that everybody in the developing countries at least makes three hundred dollars a month, and everybody in countries like the U.S. should make at least three thousand dollars a month. So that's what you need to live a nice life uh, in the United States and similar countries where you don't need three thousand dollars in london because you need much more than that and uh we this is not an immigration show so we don't know how you get a visa to the u.s you call the u.s embassy and ask them or google it uh remember that the first thing you need to learn is to love yourself and to trust yourself and if you don't trust yourself you're not going to go to google you're not going to go to youtube we are not here to teach you anything. At least I'm not here to teach you anything. Maybe Amy can. But everything you want to learn is already on YouTube and Google. Everything. is almost nothing that you can say anymore that you can't learn on YouTube and Google. The only thing you are having a problem with is your English. And the way I learn English is by hearing CNN for three hours a day. And I've shared that story before. When I was young, I was in school and I bought my first company when I was in 10th grade. And that was a computer repair shop. And in that computer repair shop, I did not know how to fix computers. I was sitting there and doing soldering and uh, sucking uh, using the, the soldering iron and everything for hours. So for every single day, there was two hours a day, there was NTM and, and the second channel started. And I was constantly listening to CNN because that was the only program available on TV. And I, I had a small pocket sized TV uh, device, which would go on and on. And that's how I l learned to listen and speak my English. And I'm not kidding here. I'm not lying. I'm, I'm, and then there was a lot of practice. And I met Suzanne Bowen, who made me practice a lot, who made me speak a lot of English with her student and I became a teacher online in Florida in a school from Pakistan I was never ever there in my life physically uh, you can do all this the same way there's no way that anybody can stop you from learning all this uh, except yourself so if you have any questions uh, we're here um, my job is to help you kick your ass uh, and I'm bringing these teachers to come in and help you kick your ass to get on your feet and start learning and stop saying, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I hear this every single day that, oh, I can't do this because I can't do this because I, I think people who say that are just lazy um, or desperate to get results overnight. You cannot get results overnight. It takes time. And there's a lot of things which will go wrong. Like, for example, the show was supposed to start half an hour ago. And guess what? Um, the internet stopped working for Amy. And if you can hear in the background, 
the cable guy is there trying to fix her internet right now. And guess what? She ordered a gigabyte of internet, a thousand megabyte, and she's getting what? Two megabyte right now. And that's the United States of America. And that's no, like no, the, one of the largest states of the US, which is Boston, and which is supposed to be trouble free and problem free and yada, yada, yada. But it's not. It's uh, problems are everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world. It's how uh, you deal with them, what we have to learn in our life and how we grow. So shoot your questions. If you haven't heard any questions so far, we have Mr. Karinder Singh, Sasya Karji, Ki Aale Bacho, Omide Khairiyat Se Ondeo. Uh, I hope you're doing well in London or the UK, wherever you are. Um, thank you for joining in, Essen Malik. Amy, over to you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, we Before you started talking about the visas, and maybe you did this because you saw it pop up on the screen, that question was asked, how do I get a visa? to the US. Um, so hi everyone, I'm very glad that you're here. And the purpose of this show is for you to ask your questions and for me to be here to answer them. So I am a teacher of entrepreneurship and career readiness, career skills readiness. And I've worked with thousands of people to help them build their careers. Sorry about the banging. Um, and figure out what they want to do with their lives. And what Rayhan said about you have to love yourself, you have to love yourself. And if you are not already a follower of my, uh, of me, please add me. I'm Amy Carrier, and I'm actually putting up on screen. I'm, I'm learning this as I go. Do you guys see on screen? The link? No, it's not working. So lots of things are not working today. Um, so I have a group called Amy Carrier's Classroom. And one of the things that we've been talking about since we started it, and actually Rayhan was a significant part of building that classroom, and he's a member and he's a mentor as well. Uh, I've been talking about the importance of trusting yourself and loving yourself. <laughs> Um, so what I would like to do today is ask uh, or have you ask some general questions that you have. Um, and here's a question. Why are they not showing up on screen? You have to click on them to for them to appear. I am. Nothing's happening when I click on anything. I'm clicking on show. Well, maybe it's stuck. So you can, if you really want to show them, you can refresh. You'll be gone for a minute, and then you will come back and it'll start working. OK, but you'll still be here? Everybody will still be there? Everybody will still be here. Except what? I really Except don't know how this works. आप अपने सवाल जो है वो यहाँ लिखें और हम इसको जवाब देने की पूरी कोशिश करेंगे। Hey, me, there you go. It's working now, right? It's working. Yes. So, how do I become? Ah, this is a question that's asked a lot in Amy Carrier's classroom, and I encourage you to become a member. Go right now to facebook.com/slash Amy Carrier's classroom and join us so that you can participate in the dialogue and ask these types of questions. And I want to ask, why do you think you need resources? I, I don't know what resources you're talking about. So are you talking about, I don't have $10,000 to invest, or are you saying, I don't have any income right now? Um, can you ask that question again? Uh, I can't say your name. Uh, but can you ask that question again and be more specific? Why can't you, can you always, say his name? Um, 
I don't speak that language that it's written in. So can you suggest him to put a language which people in the planet can read, not just in Pakistan can read? Okay, so person who all I can see is your abdomen and I can't see your name. I think you are on to a good question, but please, like Rehan said, write your name in English so that we can all understand it. Um, right. I would like to answer that question. They can go to rehan.com slash startup. There is a book which I have written about how you can start a startup without money. Do those steps. There are 13 steps. All those steps require nothing, zero dollars. No money is required to do that. And once you do those steps, you can come back to me and ask those questions, ask more if you need help. But those uh, will require some of you to change yourself. If you don't do that, then nothing will happen. Uh, the people who like to, who love their language, I don't have a problem with you loving your language. But we live on planet Earth now, the world's biggest community, or if it was the world's biggest country, it could be Facebook. And you go there and write in English because most people learn no English. And then there is an option there, write your name in your own language. Uh, then there you go ahead and write in your own language. So that comes as, as a alternative name. People can still search you in your own language and read you in your own language, which is a good thing so that people can see, oh, this guy knows another language. But if you just have one language, then people will never understand. Um, also, I would like to emphasize a lot of people criticize me and other people that why are you speaking in English? Why are you having these shows in English? First of all, I do very few videos in English. Amy does not speak Urdu, so I have to do this in English. Second, if you don't know English today, brother, you need to learn English because if you don't understand English, you're getting left out of 99% of the planet's information. Most of the content on the internet is in English. On YouTube, it's in English. So if, you are, if your English is bad, you will not make good money, period. You, you, know, you might, but it's, uh, you can't learn new things at the speed which they're coming if you're not good at English. So please learn English. And I gave you a very simple, small tip. Uh, you know, just watch or listen to content on YouTube. You can go to TED.com and listen to a TED Talk, three TED Talks a day. If you do that, you will improve your English. Even if you don't understand, watch it three times. Watch it four times. The first time, you will get 5%. Second time, you will get 10%. Third time, you will get 20% for sure. And fifth and sixth and seventh, if you repeatedly do the same thing, you will understand English for sure. I watch content in Russian, in Polish, in Chinese. And, and in Arabic, I started to pick up these languages just by hearing, just like a child understand by hearing a language. Nobody teaches a child, hello, baby, please learn this. No, they just hear their parents and they just start speaking one word at a time. And it's not a bad thing that you learn English. It's not going to make you a non-Muslim or something, you know, a non-religious or something. It's, and you should learn more than English. You, should learn, you can learn Chinese. You can learn Arabic. You can learn other languages. You can learn French. It's a great thing to learn languages. And as a friend of mine yesterday was saying, it opens different parts of our brain. It, it lightens it up. So language is very important. Just like if you are, I'm from Karachi, and people in Karachi make fun, or people in all over the country, all over the planet make fun of people who speak in a different accent even. So for example, Amy is from the North, so she would be a Yankee. So they would make fun of, oh, the Southern people speak like this. The so same thing, the Southern people say, oh, the Northerners, the Yankees speak like this. It's, it's bad, I don't like race, it's more like racist for me, but it helps if you speak in a certain accent. I love American accent, I love the Northern or the California accent, it's neutral because that's what I learned to grow up on CNN. I don't speak like that. I don't think I can ever, ever lose my accent, but you know, uh, I, I think it's more understandable. So Amy, people want Amy rather than Rehan. Sorry if you don't mind. <laughs> 
Did they sing Shut Up? Um, aw. Well, you know, guys, uh, English is, is the universal language uh, that all airline pilots have to speak. So there has to be on this planet one language that works for the global air transportation system. So just so that you understand, I, I actually feel at a disadvantage because I took almost seven years of Spanish, or I took seven years of Spanish and I was almost fluent, but I never traveled anywhere. So I lost it. So I'm not bilingual and I feel like everyone should be bilingual at least. So um, I'm, I'm privileged because I'm an American and I speak the language that most of the world speaks or is expected to speak. Um, so I'll just say that to agree. And there is a question here I want to put up on screen. So Tahir says, I have an idea, but I don't want to include more people. That's one issue. I want to work alone at first then I can increase the resources. How can I guide you? Um, to hear, I'm, I'm curious why you don't want to include more people. And the reason I say that is because we're now so global and it's very hard to build something by yourself. Uh, it used to be that you could be like a Steve Jobs or you could be a Bill Gates and you could be that head person, that point person who's building something. But now, because everything is so technology heavy and community heavy and all of your marketing and all of your um, advertising is going to have to be done by other people. You can't do everything all at once. So I would encourage you to rethink your, your, pers your perspective right now and find at least one other person you can work with. There's a huge advantage to working with a team or with a partner because you, you help to keep each other going and keep each other lifted up when things get tricky. Um, but to answer your question, you don't want to include people at first, but then you want to add them later. My recommendation is you can just do something online where you're just talking to the world. Um, you can sell your products online. Um, there's a lovely woman who also does a program on this channel of Rehan's. Her name is Tanya Shipman. This is what she's done. So you can uh, watch her shows. She's got a few more this week, but she's also recorded, I think, 30 days worth. So there's a lot you can learn from her about how to build something solo. That's my recommendation. Anything you want to add to that, Rehan? No. Okay, this person says, my family cannot support business. Well, if you need money right now, you need to go get work. And you can focus on building whatever's, whatever idea you have. You can focus on building that outside of your day job. I think you he's are. saying that the community, that his family doesn't even support um business which means that um they don't allow him to start a business a lot of families people who are in jobs don't allow their children to go and start a business because they're scared they have the fear of failing therefore they don't allow their children to start a business or get into business uh so for all those people who have families like that first of all what you can do is you can start a business part-time online. Uh, that's what Tanya is showing. You can go and watch her repeat telecast on our, our page. Um, you can also go on YouTube and search for a gazillion other videos. And uh, if you want to work online, you can go to rehan.com slash work online and you can go and do that. Talking to them, I'll be right back. Sure. Thank uh, you. So everyone who comes to us or me or her, his first obstacle you have in your head is uh, that you need money. You don't need money to start a business. There's a lot of new businesses that you can start without any money. All the people who are commenting on this page are educated, have some kind of degree, have some kind of computer skills. You can use those skills to provide service to people 
who who need those services for example just like an accountant does an accountant does not need a lot of money to start an accounting business similarly if you're going to start a business where you help people sell online you help people set up with their facebook you help people maintain their website all these businesses do not require a lot of money all you require is a computer and an internet connection and you can start you can buy a laptop for hundred dollars and then you can start doing that using that laptop and an internet connection uh, so all you require is that you need to convince your family to allow you to work for four hours a day if you're doing a job and then for four hours a day you can grow it once the money is coming in you can show it to your parents and they will allow you to do a business so the only thing is you have to you know start doing it um Tariq Shatat, what is the best business that make good money? Sell heroin or rob a bank. That's the easiest way and the fastest way. Uh, but if you really want to start a business, you start small. You start one business and you grow it from there and you take it from there and you take it from there. You have to start small so that you understand how business work. All businesses are same. Small business, large business, the functionality is same. You have to take care of your customer. You have to provide a great quality of service and a product and you be nice to your customers and do be ethically correct. So you are a small business or a large business. It doesn't matter if you're doing a large business or a small business. If you have a good product, if you provide good service, if you, you know, you do that. Like, for example, Tariq, I have been asking you to start an online freelancing business for like four years now. You haven't started. If you haven't started, how would you make it into a big business or how would you make more money? So to make more money, you have to make first less money. If you can't make less money, how do you expect to make more money? So you have to start doing something and do what you know, even if it doesn't make ends meet. That's why I suggest everyone who is even 12 uh, to start a business and doing it online it's, it's, it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> Um, I have this young boy, yes, I meet this week, he's 13, yesterday, that, uh, Can you hear buddy, me? you look like 31 to me, you don't look uh, 13 to me, so it's your attitude which makes you more successful, change your attitude, yes, I can hear you this time. Okay, um. Okay, keep. T I'm sorry, I have to deal. I have to deal with this. But um, can you? Uh, this is Enzo. Hey, world. This is Enzo. Enzo has been um, fixing. There are a lot of problems with the connectivity in my house. So, Enzo, can you tell us so that I have it recorded what it is that I need? So she needs um, a Wi-Fi extender which will bring the range from the Wi-Fi from the office to your living room. Mm -hmm. And it's best to get a dual band extender because it will bring both Wi-Fi ranges that you have. Since you have a 2.4 megahertz and a 5 megahertz, 2.4 megahertz reaches a farther distance, but it's a slower speed. And you have the 5 megahertz, which is a shorter distance, but it's a faster speed. So okay. if you get the so is extension, she, it will bring Is she getting the gigabyte? Is she getting the yeah. gigabyte in her office? No. I just I gave her back her old modem. And then she gets okay, the but the what's the maximum speed she can get in her office on that modem? Which mo know. which plan is she subscribed to? She she's I believe she has um the proficient box. So you get between one hundred to one hundred and fifty, and if you have the blast, you get two hundred. You can answer him. So I believe she has the proficient pro, which is the speed between one fit one hundred to one fifty megahertz. That's the speed. Is she, is she getting hundred megs now? I, I'm waiting for it to come up, and then I want a speed test to, to make sure she's getting her speed. All right. Yeah, we're, we're testing it. It's um the problem is the the messed up wiring in the building. So um that's why I had him actually tell you so you can explain to me later. Okay, it looks like. Mm. No, it's not connecting. Thank you. Yeah, this would be where it connects. Okay, guys. This is real life, right? This is um, 
I, I work a lot out of my home, so I need the connectivity, but this guy has been here for several hours and he can't fix the problems because the wiring is ancient. And we just have to figure out how to do our best with what we have. I can't get the one gig service because of the wiring. Um, so he wired me up for one gig and we got even less than the 100 we typically get here. Uh, we got 38 when the one gig was up. So, um, and now it's still not working. So let's try and answer a couple more questions. Uh, Noor says, hi, Rayhan and other lady. My name is Amy Carrier. Um, not other lady, but thank you. Um, which type of business should I start with 1 million rupees? I can tell you right now that we talk about this on my page, my um, Amy Carrier's classroom page. You, you need to start with passion, not money, because the richest people in the world will tell you that the money doesn't make them happy. So you need to ask yourself, what would you like to do? What problems exist in the world that you would like to create solutions for, that you'd like to fix, be part of fixing either your local neighborhood or your community or your country or the world? Um, you have to start there. So I can't answer this question. I, I really don't answer this question. If somebody came to me and said, Amy, I have $5,000, what can I start? I will most of the time tell them you need to start doing something that makes you happy because that you will put your energy into and you will build and it'll be successful. Um, for people who just want to invest money that they have, you can buy a franchise of something. That way it doesn't have to be anything that you care about. But you put the money in, hopefully you hire good people and you get to make money off of it. Franchising is not big in Pakistan yet, especially with a million rupees, you can't really do much. Million How much rupees is a million? Is ten thousand dollars. And you can't really start a big franchise uh, with with a million rupees. Um, as I said, it's ten thousand dollars. However, there's a huge opportunity for people to start franchise business in Pakistan uh, to franchise their small business. There's a lot of businesses. For example, they can start a laundry shop. They can start a photocopier shop. They can start a, um, a Nehari, a biryani store. And they can franchise that for a million rupees or even half a million rupees. And um, if they can, they can easily start that. But the challenge is uh, most people here uh, in the, like in any other culture which is growing, are uh, scared of sharing their knowledge. They feel that somebody will come in and uh, they will lose their business. So therefore, um, they don't share their knowledge and they don't grow their business as fast as they can. I was talking to one of the very rich uh, Nehari or business restaurant owner. They, they made a second business for at least maybe a million dollars. They must have spent or $2 million on their shop, new business. And I was talking to the owner. He actually stands there and sells like a dollar um, Nehari every day. Or, you know, his average ticket might be $10. But when I talk to him about franchise, he's like, no, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Everything is difficult. Getting married is difficult. Getting a baby is difficult. Everything is difficult. You have to learn how to learn how to understand how to fix the difficulty, how to learn how to pass the difficulty. And when a baby, when you get a baby and it cries, you don't throw it out of the window. You wait and you be patient with it and you learn, you call somebody, hey mom, hey uncle, hey friend, how, what do I do? My baby's crying, I have never had a baby before. What do I do? And you do the exact same thing with the business. When you get stuck, you call a mentor, you call a friend, and you ask them, what do I do? I'm not getting customers. What do I do? My baby's not eating. What do I do? My employee, my maid is not helping. What do I do? You ask and your questions. your business will be your baby. It has to be. Yeah. If you, you, if can't, you, you can't give up on it. Baby. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's a good question, Swan Abbasi. That's a good question. Yeah, it is a good question. So... There's a question here on this partnership. What qualities should we see in our potential partner? You have to find somebody you trust, someone you like, 
someone you enjoy spending time with and someone you have a professional relationship. I guess my Wi-Fi is working. My iPad is being up at the storm. Um, just like Rehan said, a marriage. It's just like a marriage. You're going to be spending a lot of time with this person. You need to trust them. You need to be able to rely on them no matter what happens. You need to be able to be your authentic self. If you get stressed out, you need to be able to work through that with your partner. Partners are different from employees. That's something else to keep in mind. So Amir, oh, this is a really long question. Hopefully I can and see it. I have a point on that. When you yeah. get married, you're stuck, but in a partnership, you're not stuck. You can change your wife or partner every two years or a year later. Okay. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Um, all right. Amir says, it said that when you are in your early 20s, find a good boss to work for and learn from him or her. Uh, but how do you really find such a boss? That's a good question. So this is this is actually uh, just as much a question about mentorship. And everybody needs work. We're, we're lifelong learners. We always need to be learning. And that means we learn from books. We take classes. We learn by just observing other people. But we also learn in these mentorship relationships. And I know that a lot of people consider Rehan their mentor. Um, a mentor should really be someone who you can connect with personally and you can learn from, and you can actually bring your challenges and your questions to. A mentor will not solve your problems. Um, and if you don't have a personal relationship, again, I know that Rehan has a million followers, uh, but he doesn't necessarily know or have the capacity to connect with most of you guys. Um, so you can still learn from him. He can be your teacher. You can read his books and you can watch his videos. Um, and it's the same when you're looking for a boss. Now, when you're young, and actually depending on where you live most of your life, you have to get a job to pay the bills. But you still want to do what you can to find a company to work for that you like, that you respect, and then the people that you work for there will represent that company, and hopefully you admire them and you learn from them. Do you want to add anything? Yeah. Um, well, it doesn't apply. The analogy I'm about to give does not apply necessarily in Pakistan. Uh, finding a good boss is like dating. So you go and work um, in different companies. You do internship at a very young age. And you work in for at least three months uh, or two months in a company. So I suggest to people who want to start their business, or even if they have done their metric, metric or high school, they should go and do an internship for a year in four different companies. Every three months you change a company. If you have not had a bad coffee or tea, you don't really know what is a good coffee or tea. If you never had a good boss or bad boss, you don't really know how to compare it. You're hearing stories from coworkers who also have not worked for other people. So you really don't know what is a good boss or a bad boss. Today on the internet, you can search for people. You can find jobs and you can review. And when you go and apply for a job, you should do your research about the company, about who's going to interview you. And then you go there for an interview. Um, anybody who is looking for a good job, I would love to hire you. I even pay $100 to anyone who even pass my exam because that we have a pre-qualification. We are looking for bold people. We are looking for people who don't just say I'm bold, who don't just say I'm a different thinker, who don't just say that I like to learn, who don't just say I have good English, but I want to get past you, you to pass a test. You can go to our website, supertech.com slash start. There's a test there. That test will take 40 hours for you to complete because you have to watch four different movies. You have to read four different books. And unless you, and then you make a video of yourself explaining what did you learn from movie one? What did you learn from movie two? What did you learn from movie four? And we want to understand who you are. That's why we pass you through this test. And if you pass, if you just complete the test, we give you $100 just to pre-qualify for an interview. We will not interview you till you do that. And I'm, whoever is watching, 100 people are watching, 
thousands will watch this later. If you want a job at our place, anybody who has joined our company in the last 30 years of my being alive, I think I've hired over a lot of people, over 2,000. Every single person who comes in gets more money when they leave. Because I, I, I thought I was stupid for doing this, but then I heard Jeff Bezos the last week. I heard that while there are people at a lower level job, they try to make sure, they try to help their employees to get better jobs in other companies if they can't offer them. So they offer them training program. Similarly, in our company, when you join in, you're, every single day for an hour a day, we require you to learn. If you don't learn, you will eventually get fired or you will leave your, our company automatically. So it's better you don't join our company. We have a different culture. We don't have, we're not a typical Pakistani company, uh, which we, you know, people come in and they do yes boss and they get, they get their job done. Yes, we require a lot of yes boss also, but we also require you to have a brain who work with us. If you don't want to use your brain, go somewhere else. But if you want a good job, as you said, you want a learning te teacher, a, uh, a company which will teach you, our company makes sure that you are growing yourself. And if you don't grow at 20% a year, we fire you. We don't keep you there because we are not really looking for people who want a stagnant job. Uh, if you want a stagnant job, you can join as a peon. But I have my current peons joined in as peons, and now they're programmers or operate, computer operators. And, um, you know, they used to clean toilets, and now they don't. They, they now are programmers and all. So the thing is, uh, go and do different uh, jobs and different internships in different places. And, and yeah, as Tahir Niaz is saying, love your job. Find out what you love because you might not love your first job, but you might love it. You have to go and explore uh, what is available, and then you will know uh, if you I like it or not. I about this. Sure. Um, we now live in a global workforce and economy, and I'm working more and more with uh, people in Pakistan, and it's teaching me the difference in our working cultures. And that's important for me to know because of the work that I do. Um, but what's always important across the world is consistency. And if you say you're going to do something, you do it. And if you say you're gonna have an appointment at a particular time, you do it, especially now because we're working you know, with different people in different time zones. So if people find a time to actually get together and do work or have a phone call or do a live video, make sure that you do your very best to stick to that time because that makes you more employable. Your reputation, your reliability, makes you more employable and it makes people more likely to give you a good recommendation. Um, uh, and right now, Amy is looking for a, uh, a virtual assistant. If you are interested in working with her, uh, send her your CV and uh, you know, if she hires you, we will hire you for her. We will pay you her, the salaries. You can be anywhere in the planet, to be honest. Um, the salary we're offering is right now is $250. You can be a first-time jobber or an uh, experienced uh, jobber. You can work from home. You can be a woman. Or you can be, a, actually, she would probably prefer a girl. And um, it's uh, six days a week, 10 hours a day. You work and work from home or an assignment basis. So do apply. But the, as she said, um, if you can't keep up your promises, like showing time to work, you're not going to keep up larger promises. If you don't keep smaller promises, your larger promises mean nothing. Mean nothing. If you're like, it's like lying. To me, not showing up on time in the office is lying. In my company, I tell my um, my colleagues, I don't call them employees, I, I request them, if you can't make it at a certain time, tell us and we'll change your timing. But you have to make keep your timing. If you don't come on time, then I really here? can't work with you. Yes, I'm here. Hi, guys. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. People can, can hear Can you hear us?
education, only having a college diploma. Uh, Parvez Ahmed Sai, um, I believe our richest man in Pakistan, Mr. Malik Riaz, does not have a degree, higher education. I am a matriculate. I have never went to college or university in my life one day to study. Uh, uh, it depends what you want to do. If you're, if you're particular business requires a certain skill set, you can online learn it. You don't need a degree to start a business. You need uh, faith in yourself. You need belief in yourself to start a business. Exactly. You really don't need a degree uh, to start exactly. a business. I was just going to say the same thing. Um, and I never and we have one guy who's saying good drama show. I thank you for saying that. If you should, you should start a drama show also yourself so we can learn from you. And they're watching us doing the drama, so you should do the drama too. Wandering around, that's drama? No, like just talking about it. Oh, look, there's Jocelyn. Uh, sit Josh down, Amy. I, I have to go get, just hold on, I'll be right, right back. I just put Jocelyn Albano up on screen. She okay. was a student in my classroom. She took my entrepreneurship and my career readiness class. I'll be right back. So, um, Rehan, just chat for a minute. Thanks. Hey, Jocelyn Albano, how are you doing? Uh, that's great. We should interview you sometime. You should ask Amy to interview you about your two businesses and share your experience with everybody else so we can learn from your experience and we can also start uh, businesses with you or with your help, with your guidance. Uh, anybody else has a question? I didn't see any questions which were apparent. Jocelyn actually started her own business. So she's an example of one of my students who was successful in building their own business. Thank you guys all for your patience as I move around my home and try and figure out how to get internet connection. Okay. So Jocelyn Hun, hi. Uh, I have so many Facebook pop-ups. Um, you got your proposal for the day. Somebody wants to marry you without a face. He doesn't want to show his face and still marry you. Would sorry. you like to marry this faceless person? No, I require a face. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jocelyn, do you have any tips? that you can put up here on screen. Talk to you, <clears throat> do you want to publicize your business? Do you have a link for your business? And let's see, what other questions do we have here? She has two businesses. Oh, look at this. Jocelyn has two businesses and she didn't finish high school. So how did you do it? I'm really curious to know this. Jocelyn, maybe I'll interview you um, and we'll do a show where you talk about how this worked for you. And this is an American woman. So if she can do it, anybody can do it. Here we go. JocelynMercedes.BigCartel.com. She has an online clothing store. It's pretty awesome clothing too. It's very hot. Um, no, I finished high school. Why did I say you didn't finish high school, sweetie? I was there. I know you finished high school. Okay, here, this is interesting. Raja, failure is key to success. I just posted um, a meme that I wrote a couple of days ago that says, in life, you have to give yourself permission to do three things. Number one is try. Number two is fail. And number three is start again. So that's that's life. Everything we ever do in life, we try. Sometimes we do it right. Sometimes we fail. And you just have to have the courage to get up and keep going. Uh, Daniel, where, do you, where are you from? You say you want to live in Pakistan. Daniel, seriously, tell us, because Rehan and I have been talking about uh, people moving to Pakistan. I think he wants to say, I want to leave Pakistan, not I want to live in Pakistan. Am I not That's reading correctly advice. today? 
No, he wrote in Kereki, but oh, okay. the first thing he needs to do is learn maybe English, because when he goes outside, if he unless he wants to um, be a janitor again, then he wants to learn some English so he can actually communicate what he wants. So if you can't communicate what you want, don't expect to get it because you're going to communicate something incorrect, and then you'll end up getting something incorrect. And you know, do you see what happened? There are hundreds of comments and they all move so fast that I just click on the first one I see and I clicked on yours. So you had the opportunity to be seen and I was ready to problem solve for you, but because you misspelled and we all misspell, that's fine. Um, but if you don't know the difference between the word live and leave, that's an important miscommunication. So please, yeah. But then again, it, I think that is what he wants. That's what it sounds like. Most people, Sunny is already living in Pakistan. Why would he want to say, "I am living"? I want to live in Pakistan. My yeah. assumption that he wants to live in Pakistan. There you go. So there's a comment on the screen right now. Hassan says, "We'd like to know a little bit about you and the Amy." Uh, specifically your qualifications and designations. Well, I put this on screen because between me and Rayhan, we have zero business degrees. We're both very good at what we do. And the reason I want to say that to you is because you do not need a business degree. Something. And this is what I talk about. This is one of the topics that I wanted to talk about in this uh, live call. Whatever you have inside of you that is your passion, that's your interest, that you find yourself wanting to learn about and research and watch videos about in your downtime, that's your passion. And that's what you should pursue. And in my case, it was my passion to teach teenagers what nobody taught me when I was in high school. I was completely lost. I had a single mother who never went to college and I had no professional guidance. But all of a sudden I end up uh, having to make a decision about where to go to college and then I end up in college and then I have to think about career and there's no one to teach me. So I taught myself the answers to every single question I had when I was a young person. And I say young person, that's between like age 12 and 25. Everything from how do I get into college to how do I meet a mentor to how do I quit a job? I had to teach myself. And then I turned that into a program that I taught to hundreds of students here in Boston. And now I'm turning it into online curriculum that you can purchase yourself. So those are my qualifications. I cared about teaching something that nobody else was teaching. And if nobody else is teaching it, you can't have a qualification. There is no degree. Uh, and in terms of my experience in entrepreneurship, I've now built several different things all over the country, all over the world. And whatever I didn't learn through my work, I taught myself or I took a class. I actually took an insurance class because I wanted to know more about how to teach my students how to get good insurance because nobody ever taught me and how can I learn that? So I took a class. Rehan, do you want to talk about your qualifications? My qualification is matriculate, which is high school. I started my first business when I was in seventh grade. And uh, you can learn more about me on rehan.com. And I have never been to a college or university ever to study. I went one day, half day, and I came back. And um, um, I do have an inter degree, and I failed in BCom two times, which is Bachelor's of uh, Commerce. So I am not really good at it. Uh, university degree. Uh, really, I really suck. And if you think that someone who suck, you shouldn't be able to learn from, you should change the you should press the unlike button and go watch somebody else and if you think that people who actually have experience have something to offer i'm sitting here offering you my experience at no cost to you uh, except the learning cost and if you think there's value to it watch it if you don't uh, if you think that there is no value to it you shouldn't 
right? Not everybody is for you. So, uh, and the reason I wanted to answer this question is because there's so many people all over the world who don't have the qualifications or the certifications or can't go to college. That doesn't mean you can't do, you can't follow your dreams and you can't build something successful. It just doesn't. As long as you're committed to teaching yourself, you're good. So Cassandra wants to be a virtual assistant. Cassandra Saunders, find her on Facebook. She's my friend and Rehan's friend, and she is a virtual assistant. So if you're looking for one, there you go. Jocelyn wants to share her email with the whole world. This is Jocelyn who has two businesses, her online clothing company. Um, and I really wish Facebook wouldn't pop up message notifications over everything. Um, and I just put on here, how can I join you? Jocelyn, there's someone here who wants to connect with you. So Zia, uh, I just put Jocelyn's email up on the screen. Jocelyn Albano, you can find her on Facebook. And uh, Essen says, Amy, you told you have CEOs who are successful in business. Can you share success? What things matter to successful to success in business? Um, not sure I fully understand your question. I have CEOs uh, in my network. I have lots of really successful business people, and some of them are teachers and mentors in Amy Carrier's classroom. So you should definitely join us there. Uh, if you want to know, here, here you go. This is a friend of mine, Nicole Sahin. You can't follow her on Facebook, but you can look up her company online. It's called Globalization Partners. Nicole just won uh, EY Entrepreneur of the Year. She's won like every award that there is. She's one of my very good friends and she has a lot of success and she works globally. Uh, Muhammad Arshad says, how is the market for handmade goods in the US? It's amazing. Look at a company called 10,000 Villages. Uh, they sell handmade goods from all over the world, and it's all fair trade, and they pay close attention to the people who are actually making the goods. And Jocelyn says she's right. Jocelyn, I have no idea what I said when you said that, but thanks, girl. Okay, here, um, Omer, this is a good question. What's better, in your opinion, specializing in a skill or stacking distinctive skills? Um, I think you're asking, is it better to be really good at one thing or pretty good at lots of things? In this country, we call that you're a jack of all trades. You're really good at a lot of things. Um, it's up to you. If you want to be a doctor, then you need to be very, very good in science and biology. If you don't want to be a doctor, if you want to be a teacher or a coach or an entrepreneur, you need to be as good as you can get in lots of different things. Marketing, finance, documentation, data, research, you need to be good at all of those things. Rehan, you want to answer that? Um. It depends on the person what they want to do. They want to um, start a business or they want to, what they want to do. So if they are going to start a business, they need to be jack of all many trades, not all trades. Uh, but uh, if they want to get a job, for example, then they should specialize in one thing. Uh, or if they want to be, if they are, tech, it depends also on them. If they like coffee or tea, if they like biryani or tom yum soup, if they like, steaks or they're vegetarian i don't know them so how can i tell them what to do but the challenge of life is number one is to know yourself know thyself if you don't know yourself what you like i'm nobody to tell you what you should do i'm not here to tell you what you should do i'm only here to guide you 
and people who come to me uh, and ask me what they should do, they should go and find themselves. And if they can't find themselves, then I can't really help them. They can go to somebody else who is willing to teach them. But I may be stubborn or something. You can call me whatever you want. But I think it's, it's you know, go and get an internship, as I said before. So it's up to you. It's up to your temperament. And the easy way to find out what you like is spend an hour doing it. If it feels like 10 hours, you don't like it. If you spend, it feels like five minutes, you love it. So, for example, I've been talking right now here with Amy for an hour. It feels like five minutes past. So I'm enjoying it. And that means I like it. I enjoy it. That's why I do this. If I wasn't enjoying it, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do this. And some, I don't enjoy when people ask um, questions which can be answered on Google and YouTube. I really don't enjoy that. I enjoy something which is unique, is different, that, that nobody else is willing to offer you. And that those things are to do with uh, different things. Um, I, I personally would say it again, what I said to you in start. Uh, before I say that, are you ready? Before I say that, share the video. 93 people watching, not one person shared. Oh my God, Simone, yeah, this is not right. Share the video. No, then more share? people can join in. What are no, you guys doing? This is, yeah, share the video. So guys, we know. okay, I have yeah. to say something. Here's the thing. It's, it's what I said in response to a question earlier. We now live in a community, a global community, and we all have to work together. I'm not getting paid to do this. Rayhan's not getting paid to do this. I'm not getting paid to do Amy Carrier's classroom. I do it because I love it and because I know the power of sharing what I know with other people. So I want everybody right now to go down to the bottom of the comments and click the share button. You just click it, like just boom, it's done. One thing, one finger, you can do it. <laughs> this is how we learn, this is how we grow. So we're sitting here telling you that there are all these ways that you can go on YouTube, you can read people's free resources, Rayhan's videos and books, you can read my articles, you can look at my videos, you can join my pages and my groups. That's all content that I've shared for free. So you have to be part of that flow of giving and sharing information. You have to. Otherwise, you're pretty much a bottleneck, right? Because this video might have something that your cousin needs to hear in order to have an epiphany, in order for their whole world to open. It might not be connected for you as easily as it will for someone else who's going to see this share in your feed. So if you haven't yet hit share, hit share. And even if you hit share, share it again to make sure everybody sees it. And the people who are commenting are gold, jewelry, platinum, silver for you. Go and add them because they are here looking and they are in your space. So maybe you have the money, but those people have ideas. So talk to them and see. Um, this is the advantage of this show on Facebook instead of TV. But in TV, you, the audience is not connecting to the audience. Here, the audience is connecting to the audience. My goal here is to connect you guys together and you do business together. I'm not interested in making any more money. I'm tired of making money all my life. I hated money. I still hate money. I don't like money. I don't enjoy making money. I enjoy teaching. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I want to live comfortably and I do live comfortably. So I don't, people tell me, can you please start business with me? Can you start this business with me? I'm not interested in starting any more businesses. Absolutely not. I have certain businesses which I wish to start for, for other reasons. For example, I want to go into hotel industry not because I want to make a billion dollars, because I think people will travel more in the planet and I want to be in that space. In Pakistan, for example, need more hotels. I don't want to start a hotel in the US. I want to start hotels in Pakistan. But I can't find the right people to work with me. They're all looking for, you know, uh, they're all looking for uh, beans from the Jack and the Beanstalk. I don't have those beans. Nobody has those beans. It's only in the Jack and the Beanstalk, Phil. If you want, to have a beanstalk, you have to wait for six months. If you want to be very successful, you have to wait for it. You have to work for it. You can't get over successful. And come That's on, right. add those people who are commenting here. 
They are your potential partners. Somebody was asking earlier, how do I find partners? Just like you find a bride, just like you, if you if you if you ask your mom to do it, you know, how do you how do you opportunity? Find you don't talk to these people. I, I don't get this concept how, of how you find a bride yeah. because that's not that doesn't fit in my culture. But how do you find your yeah. friends? Right? There's you just, don't find friends in general in our country. Uh, well, some people do, um, but yeah. majority of people are very shy. And uh, they find friends in schools and colleges, and actually, it's all over the globe. And then that's it. But then there are people like yourself and me who go out and try to look for uh, capacity. For example, Amy likes to go in an Uber sharing service so that she can make meet a new person while she is having a cheaper taxi service. So she saves money and at the same time meets new people. Uh, you should do the same. You should make business cards for yourself. Hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. And just like I have, I have this long business card, but you don't have to make this long business card. I have my story, who I am. And I have like, uh, you know, I like to make friends, whatever my pitch is. This is my elevator pitch for making friends. Uh, you can have a business card which just says human being if, or a student or nothing. And just make a business card with your email, Facebook, Twitter, mobile number and give it out. So. Uh, it's about time that people start to take advantage. You cannot travel to 193 countries on the planet. I will, but you don't have to. Um, not everybody can travel. Right. That's that's the gift of social media. You're not going to have a global company. So in order for us to be a global community of human beings, we need to have global friends. And here's Amy, you can take advantage, join Amy's classroom, you can take advantage of students from all over the planet joining the classroom and learning uh, that in less than three weeks, she has 1500 people join the classroom. And if you are a teacher, by the way, or if you know anything, you should start your own Muhammad Amil Azim classroom or Muhammad Akbar's classroom. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be Sir Hussain's classroom only. It can be you who can be teaching um, everything you know. So a lot of people, if whenever I ask people, what would you do if you had a million dollars, they come and say 50% of the people say, I want to build a school for people in Pakistan. Hello, guys, you have time. You can spare an hour a day. If you're so passionate about teaching to the world, sleep one hour less, start your school online on Facebook. Start teaching what you know. Not everybody knows what you know. So That's start right. teaching what That's you know. Right. It doesn't, right. doesn't, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter what you know. It could be cooking. It could be talking. It could be listening. It could be elect anything you know. It You might think that everybody knows. Most people, 99% of the world does not know what you know. Start teaching that on YouTube, on Facebook, and share your knowledge. That's how we will and poverty in the world. That's, it's not going to be that you start feeding everyone. People want to feed everyone. Don't feed fishes to the people. Teach them how to fish. How do you teach? Get over yourself. Start making a video for God's sake. And I'm talking to, I talked today to Leland Best. He will probably start a weekly show on video making. So I'm, st I'm finding these amazing people who are willing to start these shows on my page now. All you have to do is listen, talk to these people. You're still not doing that. If you're not going to do it, I can't force you to change. I have this, um, Pakistan has this weird, amazing problem. People don't want to change. Everywhere in the world, people don't want to change. If you don't change, you will finish. Everything you know today will be gone. Technology is changing. Everything. Yesterday we were discussing you about- Jacqueline said, you have to be teachable. Yeah, you have to be teachable. And how do you become teachable? By you being receptive, by being you calm, by not, you know, thinking that you know everything like sometimes our friends do here. So, you know, start learning. I want to meet new people. Hey, Jocelyn, you might be right in the right room. Add me on Facebook and you will see what adding new people actually means. So, um, yeah, everybody, I think... We should end it now. It's an hour, even 85 people are watching, but they're not sharing the video. 
So I don't like these people. They're not paying our feast. Our feast is to share the video. Guys, come on. There is no credit here. Share the video now. If you're not sharing, you're not paying us. This and is our Saeed, Saeed just asked the question, how do I connect with good business mentors? You do it by sharing something that's valuable to other people. They see that in their feed and they say, oh, Saeed, he's really up on things. He's paying attention to the leading thinkers and teachers out there. This is someone I want to connect with. That's how you meet people. And if you join my group, Amy Carrier's Classroom, you will meet hundreds of people all over the world, both students, there are a lot of students, uh, but also some teachers. And you, you come in and you offer value to the classroom. And you then answer other people's questions. You show, hey, I'm here to learn, but I'm also here to help other people. That's how you build your network. It's how you build your friendships. It's how you build the community that you want. And then that's where you find your business partners. So what? This guy is asking, how do I get big multinational companies to become my customer? My question is, do you have small companies as your customers yet? <laughs> If you don't have small companies as your customers yet, you're not going to get big customers because if you can't deliver small companies, nobody's going to get your customer. No, I will not buy product from you. Apple will not buy product from you if you don't have five years of experience. And you get five years of experience, you go for the small fish, not the big fish. Right. You don't Thanks, become honey. the big fish overnight. For God's sake, start. Sharish, thank you for sharing, honey. Chew what you can digest. Don't try to chew what you cannot digest. Everybody wants to become overnight rich person. You will not. It doesn't work that way. And so, you already heard him say, "It's money doesn't make you happy." He said, "I'm tired of making money. I don't want to. I don't want any more money. I want to do what makes me happy." And he said, "What makes him happy is teaching." So there you go. This is why I keep saying, and Rehan keeps saying, "You can't start with the money. It's not about the money." It's about you doing something that makes you feel fulfilled in life. Sharish, I love you, girl. My my sister in Pakistan, I've never met and never talked to, but she's amazing. You pronounce it Sehrish. Yeah? Sehrish. Re okay, Remot said Sherish. No. So, Sherish, please forgive me. Sehrish. Seh Rish, two words, two syllables. Seh Rish. Seh Rish. Seh Rish. Seh Rish. Like, yeah, Rish, like Rish, and Seh. Uh, yeah, you can S-A-H maybe even. Like my name should be Rehan, R-A-Y-H-A-N, not R-E-H-A-N. Right. Uh, Seh Rish Fatima is hiding her face. Are you a very ugly girl, by the way? Or why do you want to hide your face? She looks beautiful. Yeah, well, she's hiding her face. Maybe she doesn't like her face. So who has shared the video? Can you, Type answer, that, can you answer that question? Yeah, maybe her daddy doesn't like her to put the photo or her uncle or her brother. Or maybe she doesn't like. It. We grow up in this country um, scared of sharing our photos everywhere, actually. People think that they will take their photos and they will steal it and they will make naked photo out of it and publish it everywhere. And then people will just say it's your photo. So we do have um, some people who shared the video. Mohammed, you just down on the bottom, there's a share button. That's all you have to do. Share now. Guys, everybody share. Okay, we've got lots of shares shared all right i just asked sarish and a question i'm going to scroll up i mean so many comments Saad ismail thank you for sharing uh abdul says hi amy and rehan i have just joined it's the first time i've seen you guys uh, Amy, are my classes free? Everything I share in Amy Carrier's classroom is free. Yes. And you should follow me on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash 
Amy Carrier Empowers. And you should follow me there because I post free videos there. Here, I'm going to, hey, Rehan, talk for a minute so I can write this in. And Rehan has shared a million free things as well. So where can they go? Just go to YouTube and search whatever. If Rehan has not taught, somebody else has taught. It's it's no longer 2005 when YouTube did not exist. This is 2017. In one minute, people upload 100 to 180 hours of content on YouTube. That's not a joke. You need a gazillion lifetime to watch that content. Again, I'm repeating myself. In one minute, people upload one hundred hours of video on YouTube alone. Forget about Facebook, forget about other places. And if you are not tapping into that and you're crying, oh, I can't get good at me shot anymore. It's useless because you can learn on edX.org from Harvard and MIT. You can learn on Coursera from 14 best universities on the planet. Why are you wasting your parents' money and going and learning about something weird from a local school when you can learn from Harvard and MIT. Um, I don't know, it's a lot to do with culture. So change your culture, change your friends or your culture will change. Change, yes, change your friends and your whole world just blows right up. Yeah. So thank you again, guys, uh, for joining. Thank you, Amy, for doing this. We will be back next week on Friday, unless Amy wants to do a daily show, which I think I've suggested, been suggesting her to do that. Um, what? You could do a, you could do a daily show, um, and if you like or not, it's up to you. But a, oh, a daily show. show, a daily show. So with with me would be again next week on Friday. 10 p.m. Pakistan time, Amy will come back and teach you about um, entrepreneurship. And um, every day, 5 p.m. for the next five days, Tanya Shipman from Australia is teaching um, um, how to start your business online. Uh, similar stuff, but she's more into technology and teaching more tricks and tips on how to do exactly. And all the videos are available on the video section on my page. Uh, thank you again for joining. Thank you, Amy, uh, for doing this. Again, it's 10 p.m. Pakistan time, not 10.30. But if something goes wrong, we'll be a little late. So over and out. Over to you, Amy. Thank you, guys, everyone. Um, I just saw that there was a question, why don't you reply? Um, there are hundreds of comments, and they move by so quickly. If I'm talking or I'm talking with Rehan, I can only see so much. So thank you guys for asking questions. Just keep, and it's much easier if you ask a really short question. So thank you, please follow me and please join Amy Carrier's classroom. See you next week.